A few years ago, the famous country music star Charlie Daniels recorded a huge hit by the title, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. Those lyrics go, The devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind because he was way behind and he was willing to make a deal. When he came across this young man sawing on a fiddle and playing it hot, and the devil jumped up on a hickory stump and he said, Boy, let me tell you what. I guess you didn't know it, but I'm a fiddle player too. And if you care to take a dare, I'll make a bet with you. Now you play pretty good fiddle, boy, but give the devil his due. I'll bet a fiddle of gold against your soul, because I think I'm better than you. Give the devil his due. Where in the world did that phrase come from? What does that really mean? These questions and so much more, we'll answer all of those in this episode of History of Everyday Sayings. Hello, Stephen Carter here, your host for History of Everyday Sayings. I thank you for joining me. Who is this show for? If you are a philomath, a logophile, or you're simply someone who loves history tidbits you could share with friends and family, this show is for you. I happened to hear the old Charlie Daniels song, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, and when I heard that phrase, give the devil his due, I thought, hmm, I wonder where that comes from. So what exactly does it mean? Going to collinsdictionary.com, they tell us, you can say to give him his due or giving him his due when you are admitting that there are some good things about someone, even though there are things you do not like about them. The way I look at it, it's a grudging admission or acknowledgement that no matter what type of retrobate you think someone is, they may have some good qualities and you should acknowledge those qualities. You should give the devil his due, or perhaps her due. When we go to phrases.org.uk, we have a slightly different meaning offered. They tell us to the question, what's the meaning of the phrase, he will give the devil his due, literally pay the devil what you owe him. Use figuratively to mean give back what you owe, either money or favors. From the site writingexplain.org, their definition, which is short and sweet, repay the devil what you owe him. Where does the phrase originate? According to this writersexplain.org site, the expression appeared in a play by the famous English playwright William Shakespeare. He used it in his play Henry V, Part I, from the year 1599. This play is about the Hundred Years' War and Prince Henry's plan to rule France as well as England. In the play, Prince Henry is discussing with a friend whether it is better to keep a promise with the devil and thus be damned from heaven, or to break a promise and thus be in trouble with the devil. Henry claims it is better to keep the promise with the devil. They go on to say, it appears, however, that this phrase existed before Shakespeare used it in Henry V. According to this site, an earlier source can be found from the year 1589 in Pape with a Hatchet, and that's P-A-P-P-E, -E, Pape with a Hatchet, which is believed to have been written by John Lilly. The phrases.org.uk site also points to the phrase being a proverb, and according to them, it is likely Shakespeare was repeating it rather than coining it. Moving from England to Spain, a reference to give the devil his due appears in 
Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote. This brilliant work was the first true novel that was ever written, although for a variety of reasons, Cervantes was cheated out of proper compensation. According to Ennotes, E-N-N-O-T-E-S, Ennotes.com, the use of Give the Devil His Due by Cervantes, the context, the phrase means to acknowledge a good even in an evil person. Maritonus, a scully maid at the inn where Sancho and his master spend a night in the mistaken belief that it is a noble's castle, causes a commotion when discovered in the bed of one of the muleteers. Though she slips away, Sancho and Don Quixote get a beating. The next morning, as they try to leave without paying, Sancho Panzas is caught and tossed in a blanket. Out of pity for the exhausted and tormented squire, Maritomas brings him a drink of water. When he demands something stronger, as Cervantes relates, she went and fetched him wine to make him amends and paid for out of her own pocket, for to give the devil his due. T'was said of her that though she was somewhat too free of her favors, yet she had something of Christianity in her. Whether Cervantes was aware of Shakespeare's work, or whether the term had actually spread across parts of Europe, we really can't tell for sure, but clearly by the late 16th and early 17th centuries, it was understood and in common use. So let's return to music. How common is the phrase, give the devil his due, in music composition? When we go to lyrics.com, they tell us we have found 10,899 lyrics by 139 artists and 48 albums matching give the devil his due. So clearly the phrase shows up in a variety of songs in addition to Charlie Daniels' recording. Speaking of Charlie Daniels' recording, how did that fiddle-playing showdown work out? Who did win that fiddle-playing contest? As the song comes to a close, we're told, the devil bowed his head because he knew that he'd been beat and he laid that golden fiddle on the ground at Johnny's feet. Johnny said, Devil, just come on back if you ever want to try again. I told you once, you... Mm, I'm the best that's ever been. And the final verse, He played fire on the mountain, run, boys, run, the devil's in the house of the rising sun, the chicken in the bread pan, picking out dough, Granny, will your dog bite? No, child, no. So what are we to make of this story? Well, as much as I hate to do it, I think we have to give the devil his due. He acknowledged he'd been beaten, and he laid that golden fiddle at Johnny's feet. So there you have it. Give the devil his due. If you would like to go greater in-depth and explore the origins and related information for Give the Devil His Due, do check out the episode description, also known as the show notes. You'll find information I use for this episode available there. If you would like to listen to previous episodes of History of Everyday Sayings, do have a look at our website, which is stressreliefradio.com. On that site, Click the podcast menu. I'll also have another resource where you can listen to previous episodes linked in the show notes. If you're not yet following the History of Everyday Sayings, this is a perfect time to do that where you get your podcasts, to comment on this or any other episode, or if you want to be in touch for any reason, email me at cartermethod at gmail.com. Until our next visit together, your host here, Stephen Carter, wishing for you and your loved ones 
Blessings in abundance.